Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, in today's video, I wanna continue our, our look at Casa OS on a Raspberry Pi 4. So we've taken a look at Casa OS uh, in, in a few different videos in the past, but uh, in today's video, there's an update to Casa OS uh, that actually adds some more functionality uh, where they've actually got something where they've added an app store. Now, this is still an early development. It's something that they're still pushing out, but in the newest version at the time of recording, which is 0.2.4, uh, they've added the app store uh, so that you've got more options for, uh, for native apps that they've got available for just very simple, almost one-click installs. But before we get into all of that, uh, let's pay some bills and take a look at today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So here we are on our Casa OS dashboard. And if we come up to the top left where the little slider icon is, we can see that we are currently on version 0.2.3. And right below that, there is a button that says update because there's a new version available. So we'll click that button and we'll give it just a second to do what it needs to do. So now if we click that same icon, once the page is reloaded, we can see that we're on 0.2.4. Now over on the right hand side, we can see that there's a button that says app store instead of add app. And we've got several more app options than we did in the previous version. There are uh, more apps, new apps. Uh, we can sort by different types of apps, what's most popular. And then of course, across the top, there are some featured apps that we can scroll through and uh, see what they think we might be interested in. But for the sake of testing, let's just go ahead and install Pi-hole here. We'll go ahead and click install. And right here, it says the default password for this will be Casa OS. So we'll click OK and let it go ahead and pull and do its thing. Uh, and here in just a moment, we'll come back and this should be all set up and ready to go. And just like that, now we have Pi-hole installed. Uh, we can go check, take a look at the settings. We can see all the ports that are being used, uh, where it's being stored on our server. Um, and, and then of course, all of the environmental variables that are available uh, down there that we're using. Uh, it looks like we put this on port 35621. So we're gonna go ahead and close that out. And if we just click that, it's gonna take us to this weird page. Uh, now, originally when I saw this, I was a little confused. However, if I had just thought about it for a second, I could have added admin to the end of that URL and it would have been just fine. So here we are on my dashboard uh, using the IP address rather than the host name. So we know that that's working. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my DNS settings from uh, what they currently are, uh, but instead to point to uh, the IP address of our Casa OS install here. So uh, I'm doing this on Windows 11. It's a little different from the start, but uh, overall not too terribly difficult. So I'll go ahead and put in the IP address of Casa OS here and click OK. And then almost immediately we should start seeing uh, some things changing. There we go. Uh, now we've got four uh, total queries there. And um, if we come over to here, we can see all of the different query logs that have been uh, done so far. And so now let's do some testing. Let's open up some different sites to make sure that uh, this is all actually working the way we want it to. So let's go to yahoo.com. Um, so there we've got that open. And if we go back to Pi-hole, go back to the dashboard, we went from four to 25 total queries. Uh, next, let's go to msn.com and we'll go ahead and open that up. And here we can see uh, we went from 28 to 32 to 36, 37, 39. Those numbers just keep going up here. So let's go ahead and put these side by side just so we can kind of see some stuff in real time here. So let's next go to YouTube. We'll see it go from 60 uh, to 62. Uh, we're still climbing there, 64. So we know that this is working. And uh, just because, let's actually open uh, the DB Tech Reviews uh, website, go to the blog. And here we're gonna see that number probably jump up as well from 66 to 73. And then of course, if we open up a blog post, there's even more, uh, cause I've got some ads in the side. So uh, here we can see that everything is working the way we expected it to work uh, by setting up Pi-hole in Casa OS. 
So keeping in mind that this is just a standard PyHole installation uh, that the folks over at Casa OS have made very, very easy to install, uh, we can do stuff like go to the group management here and go to add lists and add additional uh, block lists if we wanted to do that to, to be even more protected online. Uh, you know, we can disable, uh, you know, just like we would indefinitely 10 seconds, 30 seconds, five minutes, whatever. Uh, we can go into tools and we can do things like, you know, update uh, our, our system this way for uh, anytime we add lists, we should definitely update uh, gravity uh, to, to make sure that we're blocking everything appropriately. Um, you know, there are settings that we can go into and we can take a look at, you know, what, what versions we're using of different things, uh, how much memory we're using, th those sorts of things. You know, we can, how do we want to handle DNS? You know, which uh, upstream DNS servers do we want to use? Do we want to use custom DNS? Um, you know, for DHCP, do you want to use this as a DHCP server? Um, you know, there, there's lots of options here. If you wanted to do DNS records uh, and, and assign your own domain names to specific IP addresses. So let's say you wanted to set up a, a custom local uh, domain name for one of your servers, you could absolutely do that in here. Um, of course, you can log out uh, and donate. There's more documentation below that. I encourage you to check out the documentation uh, for for Pi-hole if you're not familiar with it. But uh, that's how easy it is to set up and manage Pi-hole using Casa OS. So there you go. That's how easy it is to not only update Casa OS uh, to whatever the newest version happens to be, but also we've now protected our network uh, at least at least to a certain degree using PyHole with a very, very simple install process that they've made available through their new App Store functionality. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really does help me out quite a bit. Uh, if you've got additional uh, thoughts or ideas or, or things that you'd like to see added to Casa OS, definitely jump over to their Discord. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description down below so that you can jump over there and chat with them about what kind of things you'd like to see uh, in upcoming releases of Casa OS. Also, of course, if you've got ideas and suggestions for me, uh, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Uh, I've also got a Discord if you want to check that out. Uh, we can chat about stuff over there as well. Also, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Uh, I really do appreciate that. It really does help me kind of take care of some things behind the scenes uh, and, and make it so that I can keep making content for you guys. So thank you guys so much for your continued support. But I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.